Let's go. Scott here, back in the lab today, and today I want to give you a little uh, a little tutorial. I want to talk to you a little today about protein. Now we've talked a lot about protein before and protein powders. So today's a little protein 101 refresher course for some of you guys, but for some of the newer members, this might be an opportunity for them to learn a little bit more about protein. Protein is essentially the main building block of all of our bodies, uh, and it's found in every living cell in your body. Uh, your body, what happens is your body breaks down the protein that you eat from the food, and then it turns it into a, essential amino acids that keep every system in your body functioning and working properly. But unlike carbohydrates and fats, so we're talking about the micro or uh, macronutrition, proteins, carbohydrates, and fats, but unlike carbohydrates and fats, uh, your body doesn't metabolize and store protein very well. This, so this is why it's critical that you get enough protein each day for optimal health at a cellular level. So the question is, how much protein do we need? Uh, and again, we encourage you to shoot for uh, at least half your body weight in grams of protein per day um, so you can look and feel your best. It also keeps you more full when you add protein to each meal. Uh, and if you're like some of the people that we've had on our program before and in the past, sometimes it's hard to meet that number without getting some type of supplementation in. So I want to talk to you a little bit about protein supplements today and, and maybe even protein powders. Uh, protein supplements are a great idea and they offer a pretty cost-effective and convenient way uh, to increase your protein intake. Uh, it's also very portable uh, and so again it gives you some options if you're if you're trying to if you're having a hard time getting your numbers right. But it's important to know that not all protein supplements are made equal. So today I want to talk to you and I'll give you a little tutorial on protein and what to look for as you decide what's best for you and your family. So here are the basics. Number one, You've got to understand the labels. We always talk about reading food labels. We're always talking about becoming your own health and wellness expert. This is a must when it comes to protein and protein shakes. You've got to make sure you understand the label. So I want to talk to you about a couple of things you may see on the label. The first thing is protein concentrates. That's right, protein concentrates. Uh, a protein concentrate uh, is pretty much the cheapest type of protein source, and, and you'll probably get the most bang for your money with concentrates. And they usually contain about 70% uh, of protein. The second thing to look for is what's called protein isolates. Uh, and protein isolates is, uh, but basically what's happening is this process that they use to create protein isolates removes almost everything including fats and the carbohydrates except for the protein itself. So usually the isolates usually contain about 90% protein. And then the third thing I want you to think about or consider is concentrates and isolates combo. So in other words, you have both of them. Uh, this will probably be your best protein supplement op uh, uh, option if you can. Uh, you'll get the best of both worlds, if you will. And you'll also be getting some what we call branch-chained amino acids, uh, usually when you have a combo, when you have isolates and concentrates together. So this is always a good idea if you can find that type of protein. Uh, and protein sources uh, can either be from either animal-based or plant-based. Um, here are some of the, I'm going to give you some of the most popular examples that I can think of right now uh, that you'll probably see on your labels. Uh, things like pea protein, uh, rice protein, your milk proteins, uh, that's going to be like your casein or whey. They're probably going to be your, your most popular, most common used protein shakes uh, in form of your protein shakes. Uh, hemp proteins, eggs, soy all of these sources have great benefits, except for soy, except for soy. I don't recommend that you take soy. In fact, we recommend that you avoid soy-based products uh, because of the phytoestrogens and the estrogenic effects. So for optimal cellular health, it's important that you get a full array of the amino acids throughout the day uh, and, and, and do the best, uh, you know, uh, way. because if you do that, if you get a full array of amino acids by, by essentially eating protein at every meal, it's the best way to ensure you're getting enough protein from multiple food sources. So again, try to shoot for at least half your body weight in grams of protein per day. Animal-based or plant-based is fine, and I do a, a little bit of both. Uh, and then also the multiple sources of your protein are going to be better than the single sources of your protein. Uh, so if you have any questions, reach out to us, talk to your coach. Uh, we'd love to uh, help you with this or decide what might be best for you and your family. But until next time, make sure you get that protein in. God bless you guys. Take care. We'll see you soon.